Alright, welcome back everyone. This is Shadow Drake. Alright, so now we're going to talk about like a program standard for how to structure your program. Now, this is kind of optional because if you as a person have your own structure or standard, you know, feel free to do it. But I'm going to give you one to kind of help you structure your program. Because while you have 128 lines, the last thing you want to do is do, you know, alias a device, some devices as D0, do some math, you know, or, or load some device settings or something like that. And then just add, have some like a define constant of two and then do more math, you know, before you write something to the one uh, setting uh, you, you know the, you don't really want to have your program structure kind of haphazardly like this where you have aliases defines in weird places and then you do loop and then j loop over here you know the, you don't want to do you don't really want to structure a program like this it, it's going to be messy it's going to be bad and it's going to it makes it hard so it makes it hard to debug troubleshoot and honestly just kind of makes you wonder what the person was thinking when you're doing that so let me just kind of give you a guideline so usually the very top line you could try to do like a title you know title block something like that what 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 this is intending to do uh after that Take as many lines as you need to alias to do alias for devices. You know, every single one that you could. Because I mean, keep in mind you have D0 all to all the way to D6. And you could potentially do DB as well. So you know, do aliases for each of these device pins that you are using. Maybe skip a line, and then what I would usually recommend is aliasing registers that you intend to use for a specific thing. You know, like like solar angle from a from a uh, daylight sensor. And now this kind of depends on each individual, but usually what I would recommend is start from R fifteen and alias them down up to zero. The reason why is static data, you kind of want to keep it away from variable data. Or is, or is, wow. That is terrible misspelling on horizontal. <laughs> so alias registers, you don't have to follow this. I mean, you can still do zero, zero to R1. But if you're going to be doing some math and calculations, uh, it'd be great if you could have R0, you know, the, the closer to R0 to do your math and manipulations. And then finally, you want to define some constants like pressure max, you know, d define it, d you know, temperature max, temp max, uh, 480, you know, Put notes, 480 in Kelvin. Uh, you know, this is something in Celsius. I'm not going to do the math. I mean, you can even define K2C, and that's 273.15. You know, do stuff like that. Make your aliases at the top. Define constants. And when you get to batching, you know, you could, you could decide whether you want to define that down here. Or, you know, define solar panels and I'll, I'll teach you this hash function structure solar panel I, I i don't know if that's the exact name but you know you, if you're going to the batch device you, you can put them in between devices and registers if you want i typically do that so that i know all right this is something that it's going to be batch named then i go to my registers that are going to be a single device value then my definitions for constants, and then finally anything that you are going to initialize. So like, for example, we want solar angle to begin at zero. And do all of this first. So aliases, 
uh, batch device, uh, hash IDs, then alias, uh, registers that use a uh, single data type, then do define constants. Let's see, initialize data and stack. You know, if you need to work with a stack, you know, you can push to push four. Uh, but, you know, before you do that, you'll want to do move SP0. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll work on a stack later. But, you know, structure your program like this. All of this stuff should only execute one time. And that's why you want to do it at the very beginning. Then from here on out, this is where you put your main loop. And this is usually, if you were watching my Trade Ropa series or Vulcan, typically I will do this. If I can alias devices, I do. Any device, any batch device naming, I do that too. Any registers, I'll alias them. Sometimes I come back. Same thing with constants. But pretty much the next thing I always do is a main, skip some lines, and end, yield, j main. And that's it. This structure right here is extremely useful for getting your code started. This is something that you'd ideally want to do at the beginning of every code. And it doesn't take long. You, you, but the thing is, you don't have to know all of this. You don't have to do that. You know, you can start from the very beginning and just do main and yield j main. Or if you don't want to have the yield at the end like I typically do, uh, you just do main, yield, and j main. You know, something like that. And then as you start coming up with the code or devices, you can just start aliasing them. Alias, grow light, d0. You know, for example, define timer on. 20, uh, 2000. Define timer off 1000. You know, however you want to do that. You know, you could be working in your main logic and you realize, hey, hold on a second. I need a daylight sensor to make this work right. You can go right back up, make a space, alias, day sensor, D1. Done. Easy. You got it on there. You keep working on that. You realize, wait, I need maximum angle for some reason. 140. And this could be information that you need. And if you don't have a predefined code, the worst thing you can do is think, oh, wait, I need a maximum angle. And then put a define in the middle of your code is that's going to lead to problems. And it's going to be hard to find where that data is. Because if you need to, if you realize that you need to change your maximum angle, now you have to find that this, you would have to find that defined in the middle of your loop somewhere and adjust the value. Whew. All right. Hopefully this isn't too bad, but you know, as you get used to this, your code will should always start kind of in this way, however you do it. Even if you have to make loops within your main loop, so long as you have these starting points and ending points, uh, like let's just say emergency vent. Let's just say something happens and you need to go to an emergency vent. This will happen. Uh, do things to prevent furnace explosion, for example. I don't know how that's going to happen with a grow light and the day sensor, but whatever. Pretend here. And then you go J main. Once you're done with that, J main. So if something in your main loop forces you out here that's outside of the end, you go right back up. Or it just, however, you know, whatever happens. If you have this structure, it would at least help you to know where to put things. Because that emergency vent could be right here. Just remember to use labels. Like you, you could have 
a potato timer right here. You know, do some stuff, something, and put J and F here. That way, the the code will do your potato timer, do stuff, go to J and. And then if you need to keep other timers, like tomato timer, you know, more tomato stuff here, J and, you know, it just, so long as you have that structure, at least you know that with an end, you can execute some stuff and come right back to the top. And this is why you want to organize your code like this. And we're not really even doing much logic right now. This is just kind of the how to organize it. And this is going to help you because if something is wrong, like if your tomato timer is not doing stuff right, when you pull up the code, you you just got to go down to tomato timer, fix anything that's wrong in there, and that should fix your code. If there's something wrong with your code that isn't going to the correct timer, then you got to you know go to before you need to jump towards those new parts of your loop. Like no matter what the problem is, a well organized code, and again document whatever you can, is going to help you come back and fix things. All right, so that, this is kind of like the optional thing. You can you can choose to use this type of organization if you want to. You don't have to. But I strongly recommend that you follow some form of programming organization standard or structure so that way people can come back and help you fix what's wrong or you can come back and at least start being able to fix what may have gone wrong. Alrighty. So that handles that and so... Let's do a small edge case. All right, next time we come back, we're gonna get into branching. Because after all, this would be the last of the absolute basics. You should be capable of making some basic codes. But now we're gonna go to branch instructions because as you kind of see preview here, I don't really have a good way to go to each of these individual timers. There needs to be a way to figure out which line of code to execute. And that will come with branch instructions. All right, hope to see you then. Thank you and have a good day.